Well, good morning, church. My name is Melissa Hatfield. I'm the lead pastor here at First Baptist, and it is good to be with you guys. Uh, I had to miss last week. I was home with bronchitis, and I'm doing much better. I can still sing bass a little bit, um, but glad to be sleeping flat and not coughing all the time. And so I appreciate your prayers um, for that time, and I appreciate the staff and Brian Kaler filling in at the last minute last weekend when we knew I couldn't quite get through a sermon. Uh, it is good to be here to worship with you. Those of you joining us online, we're grateful for your presence. And for those of you here in person as well, it's a fun Sunday. It's the Sunday after vacation Bible camp where our children have been here all week with tons of volunteers loving on them and teaching them about Jesus' love. And so we're going to hear a lot about that uh, camp experience this week or this morning uh, through children and youth and video and all kinds of things. Um, I'm also really excited that today we have speaking and preaching Kara Harrington. Uh, several months ago we planned this for her to preach today, and I don't know what she was thinking when she said yes after a week of vacation Bible camp. Uh, it's been a busy time for her, but she spoke here um, in the spring and did a wonderful job preaching and sharing about God, and so we're excited to hear from her today. Uh, Kara also a couple of weeks ago led our youth mission trip to Washington, D.C., um, part of Kara's real job, other than her interim work here as our weekday children's coordinator, is she started a ministry called Just Jump Ministries, and she works with churches and individuals to participate in missions here and around the world. <clears throat> so she leads a lot of teams, works with a lot of churches to help them get involved in serving, and so we're blessed to have her use both of those skills, her, her wonderful experience with children and her experience with missions to help our congregation. So Kara, welcome. We're grateful to hear from you this morning. If you are a guest and you're visiting with us, there's an information card in front of you if you want to take a moment to fill that out. And as you leave today, you can place that in the offering boxes or on the back of the bulletin that hopefully you got when you came in. There's information on how to get connected with us here at First Baptist or to let us know about a prayer request or how we can walk with you in life. And we would love to do that. So we hope you'll take a moment to read this, to see the things that are coming up, and to get involved here at First Baptist. I want to pray as we begin our worship time together today. Wonderful Creator God, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be here together in person and those joining in spirit from wherever they may find us as we are united in your presence through your Holy Spirit. God, we come with joy and we come with delight and we come with desire to be in your presence, to experience your grace and your mercy and your love. And we come this morning offering all that we are, everything that we have to you as acts of worship that we pray you'll find pleasing in your sight. Our time today is to worship you, to exalt you, to lift you up, to declare who you are to us and to this world, and to be empowered by a time of worship and fellowship together in the presence of you, your Son, and the Holy Spirit in whom we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. I'd like to invite you to stand if you're able. We're going to sing a song that the children have been singing all week here during the camp. And so I invite you, as you sing this, to pretend to be a child with all of the energy and abandon that that involves. However, not too much, because during the song, Kara is going to come up here towards the front. And when the actual children see her coming up here towards the front, they are invited to come. Now, if you are pretending to be a child, and you go overboard, then you might end up down here. We don't have enough room down here for everybody to come down. So actual children, come forward when Kara comes forward. Everyone else, pretend to be a child. Let's sing. One, two, three, four. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in. Be quiet, we shout out your praise. Sing it out. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, we parted. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shall. 
Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who always makes a way. See on up on that cross, then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Here we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord. be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Well, good morning. There is joy in the house of the Lord this morning, and I am so glad you are here. We had a super week. Who can tell me something that you loved about Vacation Bible Camp this week? Amen. The songs. The songs. Yes. What's something you liked, Riley? Can you think? Do you remember what happened first thing in the morning when you got here at church? There were some people giving you something. Do you remember what it was? Breakfast. Breakfast. We had a great breakfast crew welcoming us every day, and then we had lots of leaders ready to love on you and teach you about Jesus. But this morning, I want us to think all the way back to Monday. I know that was a long time ago. But do you remember how we learned the story of how Jesus was born? And then we learned a Bible point. When life feels dark, yes, so every time we had a Bible point, we were supposed to say, shine Jesus' light with a little more enthusiasm, right? So let's try it again. When life feels dark, that's right. And then we had a Bible verse to go with that. Who has day one? Jesus said, I am the light of the the world. Very good. So then the the second day, we learned about a guy who was kind of short. Do you remember his name? He wanted to see Jesus. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, that's right. And, And people weren't getting along in the crowd. And we learned when people don't get along... Yes, and then we learned a Bible verse that says, live in harmony with each other from Romans 12, 16. So Wednesday was a really good day. Do you remember how 
we had a parade, and you waved palm branches, and you, you um, gave cheers for Jesus. He was riding into Jerusalem, and we learned that when things are good, thank you, Eric, shine Jesus' light. Who has day three verse? Shout with joy to the world, all earth, Palms 100.1. All right, so when things are good, we want to shine Jesus' light. And then day four was kind of a hard day because what happened? Jesus had ridden into Jerusalem, and everybody was excited, but what happened on the fourth day? He died on the cross, right? And we talked about how Jesus comforted his mother. Even during that time, people were kind of sad. Do you remember that? We learned that when people are sad, yes, who has day four verse? Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. John 14, 1. Yes, we don't have to let our hearts be trumble, troubled. We can trust in God because Jesus didn't stay on the cross, did he? He, he rose again, right? And then at day five, Let your, let your good deeds shine so that everyone can praise your heavenly Father. Matthew 5, 16. Very nice. We learn that when people need help, we can shine Jesus' light, right? So we learn that no matter whether things were great or things were sad, or people needed help, or they didn't, we could shine Jesus' light. So we're going to pray together, and then we're going to see some pictures up on the screen from this week, and you can go back to your seats. So let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for uh, all these boys and girls. I thank you that they are shining your light. I pray that you would be with us as we go about our week, and no matter whether things are happy or sad or somewhere in between, that we would remember to share you and to love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. All right. My name is Landon Carney. I'm 18 years old and just graduated from Capital City High School. 
And today I'm here to tell you about my experience with the two different vacation Bible camps that our church has helped out with this month. So the first one was three weeks ago and it was on the youth mission trip. We, we got in a charter bus and we drove, it, was, it took two days to get there. It was a long bus ride, but we went to Arlington, Virginia and we worked at a church called Greenbrier Baptist Church in Arlington. And our main service project was to help out with Vacation Bible Camp there. And that was such a good experience. And the kids at that church had so much fun. And it was just awesome to see their smiling faces. And then, so we got back in the bus, two days to get back, and we got a week off. And then, last week, had to go back and do it all again. <laughs> got, to, got to do it right here at this church. Uh, and it was also a really good experience. And uh, the kids had a lot of fun, which is the most important thing. So this year, the theme for Vacation Bible Camp was stellar. And if you can't tell by all the spaceships and stars, the theme was all about outer space. And as Kara said, the main Bible point that we were getting across was that we needed to shine Jesus' light. And the kids were supposed to like shake out their fingers like this. They, they weren't being very enthusiastic about it, but they were doing a lot better throughout the week. So, since sharing Jesus' light, or shining Jesus' light, was the main idea of Vacation Bible Camp, I thought I'd share some of the ways that I saw Jesus' light being shined throughout the, these uh, past month. So, first off, the kids did a really good job of shining their light. Their joy and their enthusiasm that they brought every day, it was contagious. Uh, I'm not much of a dancer, but when it comes to the Vacation Bible School songs, Seeing all the kids jumping around, waving their hands in the air, it's really contagious and it's really hard to not just join in with them. Uh, secondly, none of this would have been possible without all of the amazing volunteers that showed up with a smile on their face every day. I know it was really hard because we had to get up pretty early in the morning and had to go and control all the kids, make sure that everyone was on task and not running around. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest, I took a nap every day after vacation Bible camp, <laughs> and I never take naps. I was, I was tired, but it was, <laughs> it was such a good time to see the volunteers come, put a smile on their face, they're giving out hugs, high fives, piggyback rides, and just giving the kids a really good example of what Jesus' love looks like, and that was awesome to see. And finally, I want to give one big thanks to all the people that helped plan and organize the Vacation Bible Schools, um, they might have, may not have been shining in front of everyone to see, but their light definitely helped uh, shine in the background, and none of this would have been possible without their leadership. Um, so as I leave today, I just want you all to remember to shine Jesus' light. Thank you. Would you stand again as we sing?
Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through, a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a ta chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to, who, to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran, around, he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the stop spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner? But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. The word of God. For the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I have you remain seated for this song, but I ask you to sing along. One, two, three. You are holy. You 
Thank you, praise team. Good morning. It is wonderful to be worshiping together this morning. There's so much to celebrate about what God is doing here in this church and through this church. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to go on a mission trip to Ethiopia, where I met some absolutely lovely people and where God taught me many exciting things. We've served in a community called Cora, which is just on the outskirts of the capital city, but it is a small town that is literally right beside the city dump. On our first day, the ministry we were serving with was handing out food boxes to families they were sponsoring, and I noticed a lady who was holding a baby. I love babies, so I'm immediately drawn to babies. This young lady was holding a baby, and she had her hand tightly holding the hand of a little boy who was probably about three years old. But this three-year-old was not energetic like the three-year-olds who came to Vacation Bible Camp last week. Instead, this little boy was very still. He looked very tired, he was very quiet, and the expression on his face was very sad. I was somehow able to communicate to this lady, even though I didn't share a language with her, could I please hold your baby? She gave me a small smile and handed over this beautiful baby girl. And for the next few minutes, we just sat beside each other in silence because we didn't know each other's languages. But she looked so tired and so discouraged. Pretty soon, she, she trusted me to keep holding her baby while she talked to the social worker to find out if her family could be sponsored because they were needing some help. And it wasn't very long until my team leader came to me and said, They are going to sponsor her, but they need to verify that she lives where she says she does. And since you've made a small connection with her, they want to know if you would like to go with them. But I need to give you a warning because she actually lives on the dump. Are you okay with that? I nodded and jumped up still with the baby in my arms and quickly began to follow them. And we crossed this bridge over into the dump. My senses were overwhelmed by the sights and the smells, and immediately I was greeted with stares and pointing fingers and surprised faces. Because you see, it was not common for foreigners to set foot in the dump. We began winding our way through this area that literally created a mountain. I was trying to watch where I was stepping, The smells and the sights were overwhelming me and I began to ask questions because the social worker, Solomon, was supposed to be able to translate for me a little bit. And so I asked, could you ask her what the baby's name is? Which he did and then he told me and then he said, do you know what that name means? I did not and he looked at me sadly and he said, that name means My God, why have you forsaken me? And my heart broke for this tiny little baby. We eventually made our way to her home, which was a simple structure made from tarp over eucalyptus branches. And she began to share her heart and tell her story, which Solomon eventually translated to me, that she had been married and the two of them had moved away from everyone they knew that she had given birth to the first child, 
She still didn't, didn't know anyone, but when her, she became pregnant with a second child, her husband was very angry because she could no longer help work and support the family. And so he left her in a place she did not know anyone with no means to support two tiny children. She was discouraged, she was scared, and she was desperate. She was begging at night just to have enough to pay rent. Yes, to pay rent for this structure on the dump. So as she's pouring out this story, all I can do is stare at this beautiful baby space. And I began to pray for her. I said, God, will you somehow show this baby that she is beautiful? Will you somehow show this baby that she is your creation and she is a reason to be celebrated? Will you show her that when life feels dark, you are right there with her? Will you show her that you have a plan for her, even when her very name is a reminder of the hardships that her family has experienced? I really wish I knew what happened in the next chapter of this family story. I know they were sponsored and they were able to get some food and some help, but I can only pray that God is showing this baby girl and her brother and her mother his love. But you know, in contrast, the very next day I was holding yet another baby, another beautiful baby girl who was wiggling and giggling. And I was struck by the contrast because that baby's girl, her name was Hallelujah. Have you noticed how much goes into naming a child? There are so many things to consider. Sometimes you put meaning to whatever you're experiencing at the time. Maybe you name a child after someone in your family or someone in history. Maybe you want your children to all begin with the same letter. Maybe um, you want your names to rhyme. There are several different things you probably, when you're choosing out a name, you think ahead to high school graduation when they're going to walk across that stage and practice it. The first name, middle name, last name. You know you've tried it. There are so many things that we think through when we are naming someone. It's no small task. So speaking of names, if you were in the church building this past week, you probably saw people wearing these. They were wearing name tags to help us remember who was who and to get to know them even better. But often name tags start like what you see on the screen, which says, hello, my name is. We laughed this last weekend on the youth mission trip of how many names happened to rhyme in our particular group of kids and youth. We had combinations like Hayden, Aiden, and Brayden, or Cosi and Josie, or Chloe and Zoe, or Scarlett and Charlotte. Sometimes it was a tongue twister, but the, long, the longer we spent with the kids, the more we remembered their names, even without the name tag. As Landon mentioned a few weeks ago, our youth took a mission trip to Washington, D.C., and our primary serving opportunity was to lead vacation Bible camp for Greenbrier Baptist Church. And I want you to know you would be so proud of our youth. They led well, and they loved well. We served, but we also had the opportunity to visit several sites in Washington, D.C., and one of the places we visited on Tuesday was the Holocaust Museum, which was a very sobering experience for all of us. I was particularly moved by a certain picture that I found at the Holocaust Museum. If you look closely on their arms, there is a number. They were assigned a number when they were entering a concentration camp. And above this picture, there were video testimonies from the survivors playing. And I, I was moved when I heard a woman say, 
They gave us a number and they told us to forget we had ever had a name. That quote has continued to stick with me. Now, interestingly, that very night after we experienced the Holocaust Museum, we were sharing a Bible story about how Jesus didn't just assign numbers to people, but he called them by name. As Josie and Josie read a few moments ago, there was a man named Zacchaeus. It's probably a familiar story to you, but he was in the town of Jericho, and he um, was a tax collector. In fact, he was a chief tax collector, and he often took more than he was supposed to from people, and this did not earn him any friends. He was not popular in his community, as you can imagine. But one day he heard that there was a guy named Jesus coming to town. And like many of the others, he was very curious. And he wanted to see for himself what this man was all about. The Bible says that Zacchaeus was short and he couldn't see because of the crowd. And I, I have a hunch that it wasn't only due to his height. But I can imagine as the crowd was gathering around Jesus, these people who weren't real thrilled with Zacchaeus would kind of step in his way. So every time he would try to get in to where he could see, somebody would shove him out. He would stand on his tippy toes. He would lean over here and over here, but he just could not get a good view of this Jesus. You may recall what he did next. He looked ahead and thought, okay, Jesus is moving this way, and he spotted a sycamore tree. So he ran to that tree, and he climbed up in it, and he sat, and he waited. I can only imagine his surprise when Jesus not only passed his way, but he stopped under that very tree. And he looked up, and even though he was surrounded by people, Jesus saw Zacchaeus. And he called him by name. Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. I want to spend time with you. I want to go to your home today. Did you catch that? Zacchaeus had not met Jesus, but Jesus called him by name. He didn't say, hey, that guy up in the tree, come on down. He didn't say, hey, hey, you tax collector. But he said, Zacchaeus. Come down. He could have passed him by. He could have viewed him as just a pesky distraction. He could have dismissed him as not worth his time. But he saw what the people around him could not see. He saw a person who needed him. And I think if we're honest... There are times that you and I probably feel a little insignificant and we wonder if anybody sees us. No matter how hard we try, there are times sometimes where um, it seems like people or obstacles get in our way. We wonder, do our thoughts and our ideas even matter? Does anybody notice? Are we making a difference at all? Maybe you have a time where you feel a little less than well, I want to tell you today, Jesus sees you. He calls you by name, and just like he said to Zacchaeus, he is offering an invitation for a personal relationship. And so our name tag could read, Hello, my name is seen. There is joy that comes with being seen. The Bible says Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed him gladly. Well, as you can imagine, this caused quite a stir. People muttered and complained. Eugene Peterson translates verses 6 and 7 this way. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped. What business does he have getting cozy with this crook? But Jesus offers forgiveness. He knew the sins that Zacchaeus had made. But he offers forgiveness for the sins and the mistakes we make. 
He sees so much deeper than our worst offense. And he laid his own life down to pay the price for it. Romans 5.8 says, but God demonstrates his own love in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm so thankful Jesus does not expect us to be perfect. But he offers us forgiveness. He loves us so much that he went to the cross for us. Hello, my name is Forgiven. You may or may not know that the name Zacchaeus comes from a Hebrew word that means pure or innocent. I'm guessing the people around him in his community did not use those adjectives to describe him in the beginning, but Jesus saw who Zacchaeus would become. Instead of seeing only his sins, he saw one whose sins he had forgiven. And you know, when we begin to understand the depth of love and forgiveness that Jesus offers us, we can't help but be changed. And this was true for Zacchaeus as well. At the beginning of the story, Zacchaeus felt rather entitled to charge whatever amount he wanted to and to keep the extra money he collected. But after his encounter with Jesus, he paid back and he gave his possessions to the poor. Hello, my name is Changed. Jesus responded to the crowds muttering that day that today salvation had come to Zacchaeus, for the Son of Man came to seek and save what was lost. Jesus pursues us and he invites us to a loving relationship that's very personal. I'm sure Zacchaeus did not expect that day for Jesus to even acknowledge him, let alone change his entire life. You know, Jesus did not have to go to Zacchaeus' house that day. He could have spoken with him for a moment and then gone on. I'm guessing there were others in the crowd that day who would have been happy to welcome Jesus into their home that day and who would have offered him their absolute finest. But Jesus chose Zacchaeus. To the crowd, he was the unlikely choice. But to Jesus, he was exactly who Jesus wanted to spend time with. Perhaps sometimes we feel like an unlikely choice. We think surely Jesus would use someone else. Or he doesn't really want to spend time with me, does he? But yes, he chooses us. Hello, my name is Chosen. I was raised in a Christian home, and I am thankful that I, God placed me in a family with loving parents, a sister, and a brother, all of whom pointed me to Christ. I honestly don't remember a time when I was not being taught to love Jesus. We read about him. We sang about him. We sang to him. We talked about him. We prayed to him. I remember when I was eight years old, I was attending a vacation Bible school much like the one we just had here in our church this week. And my pastor talked about how Jesus was much more than someone we just read about. But that he had died on a cross for my sins and had forgiven me. And that he had risen again and that he wanted to be my best friend. And that really connected in my heart. He wanted me to spend the rest of my life in a friendship and personal relationship with him. And so I prayed and I asked Jesus to be my Lord, my Savior, and my best friend. And that decision has impacted the entirety of the rest of my life. You see, like he did for Zacchaeus, Jesus saw me. He forgave me chose me, changed me, he pursued me, and he loved me. Hello, my name is Loved. I am a child of God. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Friends, you and Zacchaeus and I, we're part of that whoever. That includes us. He sees us. He calls us by name. He forgives us. He wants to spend time with us to be our best friend. He changes us and he loves us. So this morning I ask you, what will your response be? What's on your name tag today? Hello, my name is fill in the blank. In just a few moments, we're going to sing. And if you would like to learn more about what it means to follow Jesus, then Pastor Melissa will be in the hall. She would love to talk with you more and pray with you more. If you want to be a part of this church family, you can do that at this time as well. But will you pray with me? Dear God, I thank you that we are not just a number to you. But you have given each one of us a name. You have pursued us. You have seen us. You have chosen us. You have changed us. You have loved us. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. as we sing.
Remember, that is your name, child of God, beloved, and it's been a joy to worship with you today. Kara, we thank you so much for the word this morning and the reminder of God's love for us and how God knows us and seeks us out and really truly sees us. And if you have questions or you have, if you continue to think about these things and you want to visit with us, on the back of the worship folder, the bulletin, there's information on how to contact the church office. We would love to continue the conversation with you even beyond this morning. So we hope that you'll connect with us in some way. I want to, uh, just a couple reminders, really next Sunday, August uh, 6th, I think, uh, that night is our church-wide swim pool party. So everyone is invited, your friends, neighbors, we'll gather there at 7.30, it's just $1, you pay right there at the gate. Um, cash, it's a cash only thing, so dig out those cash, those bills, and we'll have a grand time. If you're not a swimmer, it is okay. There's lots of seats around, there are plenty of us who just sit and visit and all that kind of stuff, and we watch the others have a grand time in the water. So you don't have to swim to be a part of it, but we do hope you'll be there. It's a great time of fellowship with our family and friends at the pool. And as always, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and giving. That makes things like this possible. Vacation Bible Camp, the mission trips, the facilities to have these things, that comes from your faithfulness, and we do say thank you. If you'd like to give today, there's offering boxes at the exits on the worship folder. There's links and QR codes on how you can give online as well. We hope you stay for Bible teaching. Those classes be in here at 1015. If you don't have one at the welcome desk, you can visit with someone there to show you some different ones that we have, and we hope you'll be a part of that. Would you receive this blessing, a benediction as we go to be God's people? And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us as we go to shine Jesus' light. Amen. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure.